The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Justice is blind said the celebrated Mr. Dooley. And not only is she blind, but into the bargain she's also deaf and dumb and has a wooden leg. Ah, poor Justice. She certainly can't keep everybody happy all the time. In every case, someone must lose and someone must win. Therefore, someone is always fated to feel the sharp edge of that sword. You have exactly 60 seconds to live, my friend. Oh, please, please don't shoot him. Uh, don't be frightened. And don't lower yourself by begging this hoodlum for mercy. But he's going to kill you. You've got 50 seconds now, friend. He can't kill anybody. But he can't. This is a dream. A dream? Furthermore, since it's my dream, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> mystery drama, Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Fred Gwynn. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. His name is Peter Perkins, but everyone calls him Peter Pumpkin. You remember the old nursery rhyme, Peter, Peter, Pumpkin Eater, had a wife and couldn't keep her? Or don't they have nursery rhymes today? Well, no matter. The whole thing falls apart anyhow, because while our hero's name may be Peter, he doesn't eat pumpkins. And while he has a wife, he does manage to keep her. Although why, I couldn't tell you. The Stacys are going to Europe. Martha and Frank just bought a car. And Emma got a new washing machine. Felice is having a face lifted. That's Hilda. Non-stop Hilda Perkins. She opens her mouth the split second she opens her eyes in the morning and she doesn't shut it again until she closes her eyes at night. Or so we may safely assume. But Peter doesn't listen to her. He isn't even there. Oh, he's there. He's eating his breakfast. But he's also somewhere else. How can one person be in two places at the same time? Listen. Take cover! Take cover, Perkins! Take cover! Yes, that's where Peter Perkins is right now. In one of his other worlds. Right now it's D-Day in Normandy. Get down, Perkins! Enemy machine gun up ahead! I'll work my way forward and knock him off with a grenade. Perkins, come back! You're crazy! Come back, Perkins! I got him. I, I got him. Jennifer's getting a divorce. Do you realize Charlotte Hammond has worn the same dress to church four Sundays in a row? Uh, Hilda, listen, I, uh, I'll, I'll be home late for dinner tonight. Bob Howard is saying he'll run for town council. You see, they'll need my report. They want me to do the figures for the budget. I'm having lunch with Virginia. This is, this is something very important. I hope it doesn't rain. Me too. All that mud. Crawling around and all that mud. I need a volunteer. I'll go. You wait the last time, Perkins. I'll go again. Perkins, there are other guys in this outfit. I'm going. But you have to make your way through that minefield. So what? Nobody lives forever. Perkins! Come back! Come back! The Parkers haven't paid their grocery bill in three months. Uh... I, I have to catch my bus. Are you still here? Yeah, come on in. Uh, uh Mr. Benson? Uh? It's, uh, yeah, it's me. Yeah, it's you, yeah. You're, um, uh, uh, Pumpkin, uh, Peter Pumpkin. Uh, uh, Peter Perkins. Well, that's what I said. You want to see me? Oh, uh, well, I, uh... 
You what? Uh, first, I want to say that I'm I'm sorry. Sorry? About what? I'm I'm sorry. I came in late this morning. Oh. Did you come in late this morning? Uh, yes, Mr. Benson. I was standing on the corner waiting for the bus, but he just drove past. Uh, I guess he didn't see me. It happens sometimes. Uh, a lot of times. But uh, you're here now. Uh, uh, yes, sir. And I've got the figures. Uh, what what figure what figures are these? Uh, the figures that you said you needed yesterday. Uh, oh, oh, those figures. Yes, sir. Uh, and here they are. Uh, well, uh, we don't need them anymore. We we don't. No, no, no. We decided not to go after that job. <laughs> uh. So you just go back to your desk and pick up your regular work. My, my, my regular work. Uh, you must have plenty to do, oh, don't you? Oh, oh, yes, sir. Yes, uh, yes, sir. Plenty. Well then, hop to it, pumpkins. Uh, 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 Mr. Benson, my name is Perkins. That is what I said. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Miss Himmelfarb, uh, we have somebody working here named Pumpkins, uh, P -P Peter Pumpkins, something like that. Yeah, well, uh, can you tell me just just exactly what he does? Private Peter Pumpkin, front and center. Uh, sir? Uh, uh Private Peter Pumpkin. Uh, uh, my name is Perkins, sir. Private Peter Pumpkins, for heroism above and beyond the call of duty, you are hereby awarded the Good Conduct Medal. The, the, the what? By special order of the Commanding General, it is my pleasure and privilege to hereby bestow upon you the Good Conduct Medal. The Good Conduct Medal? Oh, well, what, what kind of a decoration is that? The, the Good Conduct Medal? What, why, guys get that just for keeping their noses clean. I mean a good conduct medal. For, for what I did, I should get the Congressional Medal of Honor. Not on your life. Oh, uh, okay, then the Distinguished Service Cross. <laughs> Nothing doing. Well, then give me the Silver Star. No dice. Well, at least the Bronze Star. Forget it. I won't take less. Uh, you're not going to push me around. I got enough of that at home. And, and in the office. But when it comes to this, to this show, I run it. Do you? I decide what happens here. Uh, I decide. And what makes you think so? Uh, uh, because this is mine. Yours? Mine. This is my daydream. My reverie. It belongs to me. Uh, 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 who are you, anyhow? Who am I? Uh, I'll tell you who you are. You're a... Uh, uh, a figment of my imagination. Well, is that a fact? <laughs> I made you up. Oh, did you? You do as I say. I'm getting the Congressional Medal of Honor. You are getting the Good Conduct Medal. Never. Take it or leave it, Private Pumpkins. The, the name is Perkins. Perkins. That's what I said. And I don't want to have any trouble with you. What do you mean, you don't want to have any trouble with me? Take off. Take off? I'm the one who tells you when to come and go. This is my fantasy. I'm the only one who can control... What do you what... mean, you're the only one? Are you saying that I don't have any rights? It isn't a question of... Look, look, I want the Congressional Medal of Honor. No. Why not? Because you don't deserve it. Deserve? Do you know what I had to do to get it? I knocked out an enemy machine gun position. I, I found a path through a minefield. Those were imaginary exploits. Well, all I'm asking for is an imaginary medal. You know, on serious consideration, the chief of staff said all you were worth is the good conduct medal. The, there is no chief of staff. There's nobody, nothing, unless I picture it in my mind. And you, it, it, you, Mr. Wise Guy, you're out of the picture. You know where I am now? Where? I'm in the ballpark. I'm at the plate. The count is three and two. The score is tied. It's the bottom of the ninth. Listen to the crowd. The score is You hear them? You hear them? They're all rooting for Big Pete Perkins. The home run king to win the World Series with one mighty swing of the bat. Are they? The pitcher goes into his windup. And now, 
as a hush of anticipation falls upon the crowd, here comes the ball towards the plate. And home run Pete's bat uncoils into a mighty swing and... And... I didn't do anything. You struck out. You... You disgraced me. In front of 80,000 people, you disgraced me. Well, why is it my fault? Because you... You... Well, I want. You yourself said this was your dream, your fantasy. Didn't you say that you decide what happens? You and you alone? Yes, but... Well, is it my fault that you see yourself striking out in front of 80,000 people? Is it? It's my fault. Yes. Because till now, I've occupied myself with sham heroics and, and meaningless trivia. Uh, now I shall devote my energy to what is important to mankind. I'm in the operating room. And my patient is a great man of science who must live. He's on the threshold of a discovery that will absolutely save the human race. And yet, he, he lies helpless on the table, victim of a mysterious malady. Needed here are the steel nerves, the delicate fingers, the icy precision of the greatest surgeon in the world. And here he is, the only man who can save him, and humanity, Dr. Peter Perkins. Scalpel. Sponge. Hey, doctor. Hold those retractors. Steady. Uh, Dr. Pumpkins. Uh, Perkins. Uh, yes, that's what I said. Must you bother me at a time like this? Saline solution? Uh, but, Doctor. Yes, well, 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 what do you want? Uh, the patient is dead. He's what? Well, look for yourself, Dr. Pumpkins. He's dead. That's Perkins. 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 <laughs> Will it be? I'll have the usual. The usual what? What? Uh, what I usually have every day when I come in here, uh, uh, just about this time. Oh, uh, you you come in here every day? Yeah, just after five o'clock for the for the last ten years. Oh yeah 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 that's right I recognize you your 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 name it's it's right on the tip of my tongue it's uh, um, uh, Perkins. Uh, Peter Perkins. That's right. Pumpkins. Perkins. That's what I said. And you you always order a... a ain't that funny? I, I know what you have. An extra sweet Rob Roy. Right, right. On the rocks. Uh, no, straight up. Well, that just goes to prove what I always say. <laughs> Be right with you, Mr. Pumpkins. Uh, uh, Perkins. Hi there. Hi. Uh, are you talking to me? <laughs> Would you like to buy a thirsty girl a drink? Well, uh, <clears throat> I... Uh... Thanks, Peter. Uh, how how did you know my name? Oh, I have my spies. Really? Oh, truly. My name is Charity. Charity? Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> my folks hoped I would grow up to become a very generous person. Oh. I do hope I haven't failed them. Uh, no kidding. How, how did you know my name? Oh, I come in here every day. I noticed you. You noticed me? Mm. For months I would come in here every day at five o'clock, just hoping for a look at you. Just praying that somehow we could meet, you know? Yes. And then one evening, you just broke my heart. I did? Yeah, I, I happened to get a look at your left hand, and I noticed for the first time the wedding band. Oh. But I don't care. Do you? Well, I... Uh, I think you're the most wonderful guy I ever met in my life. Hey, uh, Mr. Pumpkins. Uh, uh, that's Perkins. Yeah, yeah, you ought to come on over here. You got a phone call. A phone call? Who, who, who would call me? Why don't you come over here and find out? Uh, uh, excuse me. Of course. Okay, thanks. I'll, I'll take it. Uh, Hello? Hello? Save your breath. There ain't no phone call. Well, then why did you call Make me up? I believe you're talking on the phone, huh? Well, why? Because I'm trying to save your life, that's why. 
What, what do you mean? That dame, that dame Charity, walk away from her. Walk away from her? You ever hear of Fats Faganzi? Uh, I, uh, no. Uh, uh, should I? He's a number two guy in a mob. The mob? Yeah, yeah, you know what the mob is, don't you? Um, only by, uh, hearsay. Well, Charity, she's his dame. He sees you even so much as talking to her, he's going to take you for a ride. Ride? Now, look, I'm the bartender in this joint, and he don't even like it when I ask what she wants to drink. Now, Pumpkins, you take my advice and beat it. Uh, uh, the name is Perkins. Yeah, well, you just hang around here with that broad for five more minutes, and your name is going to be Mud. <laughs> little Peter Perkins. You would think that information of this nature would make him faint away with fear, at the very least. You take our word for it. Mr. Fats Fergonzi is one of the toughest gentlemen in the underworld, and according to the papers, kills for just the sheer joy of it. So you would think that Act Two would have to open with Mr. Peter Perkins' precipitous retreat from the bar. You'll find out when I return shortly. Is not life a hundred times too short for us to bore ourselves? Asked Mr. Nietzsche. Well... One person who is never bored is our Peter Perkins. He has a system. When things get too dull in one life, he retreats into another. As we have seen, it's a rather simple trick, and anyone can do it. However, this time it looks as if there's going to be some action in his real life. Although, by what right does anyone define reality? Don't you understand what I'm telling you? You say she's the girlfriend of Fats Fergonzi himself. Oh, finally, finally. At last it's gotten through to you. The notorious gangster. Yeah, yeah, pal, you're catching on. And he's... He's insanely jealous. Oh, keep it coming, buddy. You're doing great. And he'd shoot me if he even so much as saw me sitting next to her. Oh, you got it. <laughs> marvelous. Huh? Well, what, what, what? It's marvelous. What are you talking about? I've, I've never done better than this before. Pal, listen, listen, for your own good. No, 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 no. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. <laughs> Look at you. You seem to be frightened out of your wits. Yeah, because I can't afford to have anybody killed in this joint. And nobody's going to be killed. They close me up for good. And nobody's going to be killed. Let me handle Fats Fergonzi. You handle Fats Fergonzi? Yes, yes. It's no problem. I got a nut here. A nut. Unless... That is, unless you really want to die. <clears throat> the minute Fats Fergonzi walks in here... He's going to shoot you. No. I'll just punch him in the jaw. But you can't just... I can do anything. Anything. This is my dream. Dream? Peter. Uh, be right with you, baby. Okay, but you can't say I didn't warn you. Fats for Gonzi. Number two in the mob. This is going to be a new one for me, too. <laughs> Thanks for the tip. That must have been quite a phone call. It was the president. Oh, your company? Oh, and if your company, too. It was the president of the United States. And he called you? Well, he has to call somebody. Oh. oh, I knew it. I knew you were a man of great importance. All my life, I've been looking for a man like you. You have? A man of quiet strength, of, of deep convictions. Well. Oh, the moment I saw you, I knew. Uh, oh, what did you know? Oh, I knew my fate. Your fate? I knew it was sealed. Uh, hold my hand. Uh, here, in, in public? And then let's let's go to some place private. When it's right, you know it. You know it at once. The electricity, the magnetism, they can't be denied. I love you, Peter. I love you. And, and I love you. Oh, 
<laughs> then nothing else, nothing else in the whole wide world matters. Charity, uh, this dream... Dream? This dream must never end. This isn't a dream. I'll make it last forever. I beg your pardon. Fats! Who is this alleged gentleman? Mr. Fats Fergonzi, I presume. Yes, my good fellow. You do presume. Charity? Oh, you see, Fats, Mr. Perkins here, uh, uh, mm, uh, Mr. Yeah. Perkins is an actor. Oh, indeed. Yeah, and he just asked me to rehearse some lines with him. He did? Yeah, you see, he's in a show. It's about to open, and he really needs... Well, I think you uh, have dislocated the timing, my dear. His show is about to close. No, Fats, don't. Put the gun away. I, uh, I see you're pointing that gun at me. Well, there's certainly nothing amiss with your vision, my friend. Mm-hmm. Uh, may I ask Why? I told her, I keep telling her, I cannot tolerate the sight of another man's arms around her. You cannot? No, I become infuriated. Well, I'm afraid you're going to have to become accustomed to it. Oh? Tell me more. Uh, you see, my friend, you're just a punk. A punk? Yes. I'll have you know I was graduated from Princeton with honors. <laughs> And this was the best you could do with your education? Become a crook? I am neither a jot nor a little worse than many of my classmates who practice their thievery as lawyers, brokers, and bankers. Indeed, I enjoy their services. I shall tell you why you're a punk. There are those men who can create a false front. Uh, um, they put on things like uh, uh, good clothes, good manners, uh, good speech... Uh, but that spirit, that spark that emanates from within is missing. There's nothing inside you. You're dead. No. You see, you labor under a misapprehension. You're dead. No, please don't. This punk? <laughs> he won't do anything. What? <laughs> see? <laughs> now... Shouldn't that take care of Brother Fats for Gonzi for a while? Hey, buddy, buddy, you better get out of here before he comes to. Yeah. And, uh, and now, my dearest Charity, uh, where were we before we were, we were so rudely interrupted? Now, listen, you'd better go. Uh, go? Uh, uh, go where? I have no intention of allowing this dream to end. Dream? Yes, it's wonderful. <laughs> Why have I been wasting my time till now with all that other nonsense? Charity... You're what I've always wanted. Come with me. Peter, it was a lucky punch. He's going to kill you. Come with me. Hey, look, Charity, get him out of here. Get him out of here. All right, all right. Oh, you have such a, a lovely apartment. Uh, look, you have to let me tell you something. Just, just tell me one thing. Tell me that you love me. I... I let you come up here because you promised you'd listen. Just tell me that you love me. But, but I don't love you. Well, you will, in time. Peter, please, please listen. You have to get out of here. Don't you understand? He'll kill you. Oh, he's already tried. Well, next time, he won't give you a chance to take him by surprise. He'll open the door and start shooting. All right, all right, all right. No problem. I'll see to it that he misses me. He'll see to it. Darling. How many times do I have to tell you that this is a dream? Oh, no, not again. This is real. It's the real world. It's not the wonderful, beautiful world of your imagination. It's the real, awful, terrible world filled with the awful, terrible people you, you want to get away from. And I'm one of them. Now, Charity, that just isn't true. How could anyone as beautiful as you be terrible? Oh, you know how. You've said it. I've said it. There are those people who put on a false front. Good clothes, good manners. And me, I have good looks. But there isn't anything else to me, Peter. There isn't. I don't believe that. Oh, please, believe it. I don't have the things that I know are important to you, like a, a heart, a soul. But everyone has a heart, a, a, a soul. Yeah. Well, as Fats would say, my heart is shriveled and my soul is withered. But he doesn't mind because his are too. No. No, I can't believe what you tell me about yourself. It gets worse. I wanted to kill you. You wanted to kill me? Maybe wanted is the wrong word. Uh, what's the right word? I don't know if one word would describe it. Maybe I didn't care if I killed you. Maybe I should say it didn't matter to me if you lived or died, just as long as... 
uh, just as long as... What? Just as long as I would make Fats jealous. Oh. That's all it was. You see, Peter, Fats has been... Well, let's say he's been taking me for granted lately, and so... I guess you must hate me. No, no. No, I love you. But I... I, I love you. Because you're making up a story. Why would I make it up? Because you're afraid for my life. And and you want me to hide from Fats. But you see, darling, Fats doesn't exist. Oh, you poor guy. Believe me, I'm in control here. I say there is no such person as Fats. Oh, I don't know what you've been drinking or smoking. I never have had more than one cocktail a day in my life, and I never smoke. All right, all right, sure, whatever. Okay, I, I did something wrong. I don't care. For a stupid, selfish reason. I must have been out of my mind. I I, I put you in a position where you can get killed. But, darling... You're don't... interrupting. Don't. Now, somehow, for some reason, you seem to have an idea that this... This is a dream. It is. No. No. This is real. Now, you see that vase of roses on the table? What color are they? Uh, uh, red and yellow. Did you ever see colors in a dream before? Did you get out of here? Get out before it's too late. No, no, it's a dream. Look, what do I have to do to convince you? Charity, darling, let me tell you why this can't be the world of reality. But look, I know. Look, in the first place, if this were the real world, you would have never noticed me. Oh, but I would. I did. N no, Charity. <laughs> you see, this is the moment of truth. Uh, Nobody ever notices me. I suppose there are those people who are seemingly made of glass. Somehow the world doesn't see them. Uh, simply looks through them. Oh, well, I'm, I'm one of those people. That, that's why I have to create fantasies. In which I'm someone important. Important enough to be noticed. Uh, do you understand? But Peter, please. And you, and you are one of my fantasies. A beautiful woman. And also a dangerous woman. Uh, you see, romance, sex, uh, uh, the, the, those things are always enhanced by peril. So I created Fats. Fats for Gonzi as your insanely jealous lover. Would I have dared raise a hand to Fats for Gonzi if he were really here? Oh, Peter, you've got it all wrong. Fats is real. <laughs> real? <laughs> An immaculately dressed, faultlessly groomed, ultra-sophisticated gangster who has graduated from an Ivy League university. And you say he's real? Oh, leave before it's too late. Fats is a figment of my imagination. Fats for Gonzi is also a bad penny. Oh. He always turns up. It's too late. As our old friend Shakespeare might have said, send him not unshriven to his grave. You have one minute. 60 seconds to say your prayer. Oh, Fats, Fats, please. Don't, don't, darling. It isn't necessary to beg this hoodlum for mercy. At the end of 60 seconds, he, not I, will no longer exist. A great deal is going to transpire in the next 60 seconds or so. But since all of it will be kind of a waiting game, why don't we profitably employ this little interlude to deliver some helpful suggestions from the good people who pay the freight. And then we shall return for Act 3, where a great awakening may be in store for all of us. is the scientific method? Well, it's based on the observation of events, of cause and effect. For example, we see the sun rise and we hear the rooster crow. Therefore, in our human wisdom, we say, aha, it's the rising sun that causes the crowing rooster. Well, now, suppose there are rooster scientists who also notice the same event at dawning. Wouldn't it be logical for them to assume that it's the crowing rooster that causes the rising sun? 
Just because we're able to settle the question by putting the rooster in a pot and having him for dinner doesn't mean we're smarter than he is, just stronger. Somehow, this little essay is related to our story. Please, Fats, don't shoot him. Don't, please. I believe we discussed the sequels that would attend any of your attempts at flirtation, my dear. Fats, it was all my fault. My friend, you have 28 seconds to live. So do you. I think your soul would be better served by prayers and by foolish bravado. In just a few more seconds, you will be no more. I shall will you out of my reverie. Like so. You're gone. Am I? I I said, you're gone. Well, I have the oddest feeling that I'm still here. That's please. I'll never do it again. Uh, Be gone. Get out of here. My poor fellow. I'm sorry. Your time is up. Is it... Is it real? It it can't be. I can assure you this will be completely painful. No, don't, please. Who's that? I don't know. Can this be real? Please. Keep completely silent. Answer it, Charity. I am not among those present. <laughs> Hello? Oh. Yes. Uh, n- no, he isn't here. Uh, no. I don't. No, I wouldn't know about that. Sure. Okay. Yes, I'll tell him. Bye. It was Clovis. Clovis? Yeah, you know, the number one, your boss. He is no boss of mine. What did, what did he want? I, uh, nothing. Come on, what did he want? Well, he had heard that, well, I'm quoting him. Yes? That some punk had slapped you around. Indeed. He said it was all over town. I see. And he had called to see if you had, and these are his words, knocked off the punk yet. And you replied? I, I said, No. You said no. Of course I said no. Look, if you killed Peter, you'll be playing right into Clovis's hands. You'll be arrested and tried and convicted for murder. That's how Clovis would like to get you out of the way. You're temporizing, my dear. You're trying to preserve this this little pipsqueak. Am I wrong? Everybody knows you're out to become number one. Everybody knows there has to be a showdown between you and Clovis. Fifteen witnesses saw you try to kill Peter back in the bar. You go to jail for life. And Clovis... Even a college man should be smart enough to see the picture. Yeah. All right, Pumpkins. His name is Perkins. Wait. Say, where, where is he? Huh? He's gone. He, he must have sneaked out while we were talking. Oh, Fats, you got to find him. Find him? For what reason would I need him? Oh, you can't let him run around loose. Why not? You mean you haven't been listening... Why do you think Clovis called to find out if you'd killed Peter? Why? Because if you don't do it, he'll do it. Clovis would kill him? He'd have it done. But why? Because you'll be blamed for it, don't you see? Oh. That's right. Oh. Look, we've got to find him. We have to protect him. Your life depends on it. And so you have come to me. Uh, Yes, Dr. Critchick. Hmm. Uh, uh, what does that mean? Oh, that means, uh, hmm. Huh. Uh, you see, Doctor, I don't know anymore. I, I, I don't know what's real and what's dream. Ah. Uh, what does that mean, Doctor? Well, that means, ah. Uh, I'll tell you what happened. I lost control of my life. Hmm. I, I think I know what that means. Uh, anyway... I lost control of my life in the world, the so-called real world. Oh. And I I just felt myself sinking into nothing and uh, and nowhere. So I started having these fantasies, uh, you know. Uh, in which, oh, oh, yes, in which people really noticed me. Uh, I mean, I was a war hero, uh, a fantastic miracle worker surgeon... Uh, an athlete, uh, the idol of the crowd. Ah. And then, uh, and then I lost control there, too. I even became nobody and nothing in my daydreams. Um, what do you think? I think you are crazy. What? 
I think you're crazy. Uh, uh, Dr. Fritchick, <laughs> what a thing for a psychiatrist to say. Oh, my boy, my boy, you must not take offense. We are all crazy. I am as crazy as you are. But you're a psychiatrist. Well, certainly, that's why I'm crazy. What's your excuse? I Look, I came here because I thought you could help me. Oh, that's why you came here. Oh, why, sure. I thought you'd come here because you wanted to help me. Uh, but you are the doctor. So, must we be slaves to convention? Yeah, well, um, okay, okay, I see. What do you see? Um, nothing. Uh, tell me, tell me, what do you see? What do you see? I, uh, I, I, I see where I'd better be leaving. Oh, no, 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 no. Please, please stay here. Uh, but, but, but I don't know where here is. Uh, or what here is. You see, Doctor, I don't know if this is the real world or only a world that exists in my imagination. Uh, do you know? Oh, you fool. Nobody knows. Uh, uh, nobody? Now, see. Now it comes out. Nobody knows. Oh, yes, yes. Most people pretend to know. They are the so-called well-adjusted people. But it's all a fraud. A fraud? Oh, yes. It's all part of the Katzenstein phenomenon. The, 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 the Katzenstein phenomenon? Yeah, yes. Because it was discovered by Professor Carl Philipp Emanuel Katzenstein. Oh. It's the theory of intertranscendental duality. It is. And it explains everything. Everything? Everything. It explains what is real and what is fantasy. Then explain where I am. Ah, alas, I cannot. Uh, uh, but you just said the, uh, uh, whatever it is, the... The, uh, the... Katzenstein phenomenon? Uh, it explains it. Oh, yes, yes, it does. But you see, unfortunately... I don't understand the Katzenstein phenomenon. You don't? No, you see, only one person in the entire universe understands the Katzenstein phenomenon. Who? Well, naturally, Professor Katzenstein himself. Well, then I must go see him. Oh, 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 but you cannot see him. Why not? Because he is in a lunatic asylum. Why is he in a lunatic asylum? Because he's crazy. Uh, crazy? Of course. I put him there myself. You what? I testified at his trial. His, his trial? Yes, I was the alienist. And I said, this man is as crazy as a Cemex Lectularius. What? A bed bug. I said this as a sop to the layman. I don't know who has spread this, this slander about bedbugs. True, they are unpleasant. Uh, 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 but Dr. Critchie. But crazy? The irony is they are perhaps the sanest insects in the entire animal kingdom. You mean you sent Professor Katzenstein to an asylum? And why not? Wouldn't he have done the same for me? Well, well, what am I going to do? Do, do. I do the only thing a sane person can do. Pretend. Pretend? Pretend who you are and where you are at all times. Here he is. Pumpkins. Why, by, 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 it's Charity Fenris and Leander Fergonzi. Good evening, Dr. Krizik. Do either of you have appointments for today? Peter, we have to get out of here. Yeah, but you just arrived. Pumpkins, your existence is being threatened. Uh, but I... By Clovis. Uh, Clovis? The number one guy in the mob. Uh, surely you cannot be referring to Clovis Sakamaroji. The same. He's also one of my patients. <laughs> Fuller is here. Clovis is here, too. Oh, that's good. Let's have some group therapy. Down, down, down. Everybody on the floor. We are surrounded. Give me one of your guns. What do you think you can do? I'll go out there and knock them off. You're crazy. What? Uh, uh, say that again. You're crazy. Listen to Fats, Peter. Listen to him. But he isn't Fats. I'm not? No. You're the voice. What voice? The voice. I always hear in my reveries. I know where I am now. It's just a daydream. <clears throat> give me a gun. No. I said give me a gun. No. Hand it over. You're crazy. You'll get killed the second you show your face. <laughs> so what? 
Nobody lives forever. But, Peter... Clovis Sakamaroji, you two-bit hoodlum, I'm coming after you. Doreen Bibilacqua has the gout. Is that this morning's paper? Pearl Parker hit her mother-in-law. Yeah. Hey, look, see the headline. Unknown man destroys the mob. Percy Bilderbeck is taking ballet lessons. For some reason, the mob was surrounding the office of Dr. Maynard Ballantyne Critchick when suddenly a man raced out from the building and... Summer Spiegel Glass is trying to climb Mount Everest. And captured all 15 members of the mob. He turned them over to the police and disappeared. Who is the mysterious hero? Esperanza Smith found a shark in her swimming pool. Wait, 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 wait a minute. This, this isn't a dream. Her husband put it there. Do, do you know why? Do you? Because I never dream about you. Never. If, if you're here, this is the real world. This, this paper is real. This news is real. I did do it. Lester Langebard stopped smoking. I don't have to be afraid of anybody. Summer Fortescue stopped drinking. Yeah. And Hilda Perkins stopped talking. Huh? Did you hear what I said? Uh, I, I, uh, I said Hilda Perkins stopped talking. I don't want to hear one more single solitary word out of you. Now, do you understand? I, 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 uh, what was, uh, sure. Yeah, because if I do, I'm going to... No, 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 please. You don't have to do that. All you really have to do, just now and once in a while, is, is just notice me. <laughs> it is said that a woman's mouth is usually filled with words because her heart is empty. And it can also be said that a man's mind is filled with silly dreams because his wife doesn't help him fulfill his most important one. Yes, a great many things can be said. And you can rely on me to say some of them when I return shortly. Once again, as we do so often, we were involved with dream and reality. And why not? Isn't that the basic stuff of our existence? As the philosopher said, life is a shadow play where light and darkness blend. And we are only permitted brief, blurred glimpses. And the curtain descends just as we think we have grasped the argument of the drama. Our cast included Fred Gwynn, Bryna Rayburn, Arnold Moss, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant... Thank mm-hmm. you.